Hey y'all, uh, Jamie from Country Diggers. I'm going to do another history. And this time I've got a par, old par whiskey bottle. Now, uh, this is a 1950s. And uh, instead of the company, which is in Leith, Leith Scotland, I'm going to do a history on the man it's named after. He's a very interesting man. Y'all gotta watch this. Okay, here we go. Old Par Whiskey, uh, whiskey bottle. But Thomas Old Par, Old Tom, was supposedly born in 1482 or 1483 and reportedly died November 13th, 1635. Yes, that would make him 152 years old, okay? He was an Englishman and uh, a portrait of Parr hangs at Shrewsbury Museum and Art Gallery with the inscription that reads, Thomas Parr, died at the age of 152 years and 19 days. The very, the old, very old man of Thomas Parr, son of John Parr of Winnington in the parish of Alderbury, Alderbury, uh, who was born in the year 1483 in the reign of King Edward IV being 152 years old in the year 1635. The portrait was once in the collection of the Layton family of Lowton Park, which is in Alberbury. Records vary, but Parr was allegedly born around 1482 or 1483, although he may have been born as recently as 1565 in the parish of Alberbury. He lived in the small hamlet of Winnington in what is now called Old Parr's Cottage, uh, Shropshire. He existed and even thrived on a diet of, get this, sub rancid cheese and milk in every form coarse and hard bread and small drink, generally sour wine, which is why is the liquid remaining after milk has been curdled and strained. That sounds disgusting, <laughs> but it, hey, if you live 152 years, who cares? <laughs> but, um, as the physician William Wim Harvey wrote, on this sorry fare, but living in his home free from care, did this poor man attain to such length of days. <laughs> he married Jane Taylor at the claimed age of 80 and had two children, both of whom died in infancy. Tom Tom Parr purportedly had an affair when he was more than 100 years old and fathered a child out of wedlock. This guy was, he, he must have been something. <laughs> for, for which he had to do public penance, penance, penance in the church porch. <laughs> After the death of his first wife at the alleged age of 110, he married Jane Lloyd, a widow at the alleged age of 122. <laughs> they lived together for 12 years with Jane commenting that he never showed any signs of age or infirmity. <laughs> As news of his reported age spread, old Parr, became a national celebrity and was painted by Rubens and Van Dyke, 
I will put up pictures after I read this. In 1635, Thomas Howard, 21st Earl of Ardendale, visited Parr and took him to London to meet King Charles I, presented as a curious piece of nature. The Earl arranged for Parr's daughter-in-law to accompany him on the southward trip as well as an entertainer known as Jack the Fool to amuse Parr on the journey. The carriage and escort attracted large crowds as it traveled towards London, with people stifling the old man in an attempt to touch him and hear him speak. By the time he finally arrived in the capital, Parr was reportedly blind and feeble. King Charles I was reported to have asked him, <clears throat> Master Parr, you have lived longer than other men. What have you done more than other men? Parr replied that he had performed penance for an, an affair with Catherine Milton, a village maiden. <laughs> okay, the king was stern, stating, fee, fee, old man. <laughs> Can you remember nothing but your your vices? <laughs> oh man. Parr was treated as a spectacle in London, but the food and environment caused him to die within only a few weeks. <laughs> On November 13, 1635, the king arranged for him to be buried in Westminster Abbey on November 25th, 1635. The inscription at his gravestone reads, uh, Par of Ye country, County, Par of, Par of Ye County of Salop, born in A.D. 1483. He lived in Ye reigns of ten princes. King Edward IV, King Edward V, <clears throat> King Richard III, King Henry VII, King Henry VIII, King Henry VI, I mean King, King Edward VI, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, King James, and King Charles. Uh, aged 152 years, and was buried here, November 15, 1635. <clears throat> William Harvey, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> William Harvey, the physician who discovered the circulation of the blood, performed an autopsy on Parr's body. The results were published in the book De Ortho et Sanguarius. I don't know what that means. But anyway, it's published in a book by John Betts and uh, as an attachment, as an attachment in the book. Harvey examined Parr's body and found all his internal organs to be in a perfect state. No apparent cause of death could be determined and it was assumed that Parr had simply died of overexposure because he had been too well fed. <laughs> A modern interpretation of the results of the autopsy suggests that Parr was probably less than 70 years of age. That, that probably sounds more realistic. <laughs> it is possible that Parr's birth records were confused with those of his grandfather. Parr did not claim to be able to remember specific events from the 15th century. Now, um, he was mentioned in several works. John Taylor wrote about Parr in his 1635 poem, <clears throat> The Old, Old, Very Old Man, or The Age and Long Life of Thomas Parr, drawing the moral morale that longevity comes from a simple country lifestyle. Hey, that means I'm going to live a long, long life. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 
And um, a portrait of Parr hangs in the National Portrait Gallery in London. Parr is mentioned in two books by Charles Dickens, The Old Curiosity Shop, and Dom Bag and Son. Dom Bay and Son. <clears throat> in 1871, Mark Twain considered writing an autobiography of Old Parr where he would debunk the longevity claim. In Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, Dracula, Abraham Van Helsing cites Parr's age as an example of inexplicable phenomenon that are nevertheless real. <coughs> A Scotch whiskey brand, Grand Old Parr, launched in 1909, is named after Parr in Leith, Scotland. That is where this uh, bottle came from, Leith, Scotland. Um, maybe y'all can see on the bottom there. I don't know if you can or not, but that's a cool, cool bottle, I think. I want to try and get the um, label for it. I'm going to try and get the label for it. It's a federal law for bids, but it's the 1950s. And then we got PAR has been used in as, a, as an example of the health benefits of some natural medicines, including herbal colon cleansing, hence the term up to PAR. Uh, Edith Sitwell mentions PAR in 1958's um, English eccentrics, a gallery of weird and wonderful men and women. <clears throat> Margaret George's novel, Elizabeth I, imagines a meeting between Parr and the Queen. I, I've got that book. I'm going to have to read it again so I can uh, see about that. But I've got that book. <clears throat> and as a side note, during Parr's lifetime, two calendars were in use in Europe. The Julian Old Style calendar in Protestant and Orthodox regions, including Britain, and the Georgian Gregorian cal uh, or is it Georgian or Gregorian? Georgian. Georgian. The Georgian New Style calendar in Roman Catholic Europe. At Parr's burial, Georgian dates were 10 days ahead of Julian's dates. Thus, his burial is recorded as taking place on November 15, 1635, old style, but can be converted to a new style, modern date of November 25, 1635. So, but that was, uh, I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> And um, hope y'all enjoyed it. Right now, it is like 100, 100 degrees outside. So I am not going to be digging this week. I'm not going to be metal detecting or going out any this week with it being 95 degrees with an index of 108 plus. So <laughs> I'm just doing this history right here. So hope y'all enjoyed it and uh, have a great week and see you on the next video. Oh yeah, don't forget, I'm at uh, 290 subscribers. 10 more to go and we will have the giveaway. Be sure you check out the giveaway video, go down to it, like, subscribe, comment, and you'll be entered into that giveaway. 10 more subscribers is all I need for 300. All right, see y'all later. Bye.